Welcome all to Dr. Anima Upadhyay's Chemistry Lab videos. In my several previous videos, we have been preparing the Vyuga questions on various volumetric experiments. In today's video, we will prepare the Vyuga questions on estimation of available chlorine in the bleaching powder. So the most relevant question if you are performing this experiment will be what is bleaching powder and what are its uses? Your answer will be bleaching powder is calcium oxychloride or calcium hypochlorite and its formula is CaOCl twice. There are various uses of bleaching powder. It is used to bleach the dirty clothes. It is used as a disinfectant in purification of water to kill the germs. And it is a very strong oxidizing agent also. What is the active part in bleaching powder? The active part in bleaching powder is hypochlorite ion, that is OCL ion. What happens when you dissolve bleaching powder in water? When bleaching powder is dissolved in water, it produces calcium ions, which are cations, along with the production of two types of anions, the chloride ions, that is Cl negative, and hypochlorite ions, that is OCl negative. How do you estimate the available chlorine in the bleaching powder? To estimate the available chlorine in the bleaching powder, I have to take indirect method of iodometric method of titration. What is iodometric method of titration? In this method, the bleaching powder aqueous solution is treated with an acidified solution of potassium iodide. As a result of which, the Chloride ions present in the hypochlorite ions oxidizes the Ki liberating an equivalent amount of iodine. This liberated iodine then is titrated with standard solution of sodium thiosulfate and the liberated iodine then oxidizes sodium thiosulfate solution to sodium tetrathionate and itself gets reduced to sodium iodide forming a milky white precipitate at the end point. What is the indicator employed in this titration? The indicator employed in this titration is freshly prepared solution of starch. How do you make the solution acidic? What reagent do you use? We use glacial acetic acid to make the solution acidic. So what are the reagents which are required to perform this experiment? To perform this experiment, we need a standard solution of sodium thiosulfate, bleaching powder, glacial acetic acid, Potassium iodide solution 10% and starch indicator. What are the steps involved in this experiment? The experiment is performed in two steps. First is preparation of an aqueous solution of bleaching powder. And second is titration of the liberated iodine with the standard sodium thiosulfate solution. Explain the preparation of aqueous solution of bleaching powder. To prepare a solution of bleaching powder, around 2 gram of bleaching powder is weighed in a weighing bottle. It is then transferred into a mortar and then little amount of water is added and with the help of pestle, it is grinded to a thick paste which is smooth we add little more water to dilute this thick paste 
and then leave it to settle down. The supernatant liquid is then decanted in a 250 ml volumetric flask. To the residue which is left in the motor, more water is added and the same procedure is repeated till all the bleaching powder is transferred in the volumetric flask. Then with the help of distilled water, the suspension is diluted up to the mark in the flask and it is mixed. Now this is ready for titration. Can you explain the titration also? To perform the titration, a standard solution of sodium thiosulfate around 0.5 normal is prepared and filled in the burette. Then 25 ml of aqueous solution of bleaching powder which I have prepared is pipetted out in a conical flask to which one test tube of distilled water is added followed by the addition of 10 ml 10% potassium iodide solution and 5 ml glacial acetic acid solution. It is then titrated with the standard sodium thiosulfate solution and near the end point starch is added. When the starch is added the color turns to bluish black. It is further titrated with the standard sodium thiosulfate solution till it changes to milky white. And this is the end point. It is recorded in the observation table. Another trial is performed to get a concordant value. Why are you adding starch towards the end point and not in the beginning? Starch is added towards the end point and not in the beginning because in the beginning the intensity of iodine which is liberated by the chloride ions is very high. And at this point if starch is added then the liberated iodine will most likely form a water insoluble stable complex with the starch and then the iodine will no longer be available for titration with the sodium thiosulfate solution and this is the reason it is added the starch is added towards the end point and not in the beginning. How do you acidify the Ki solution? The Ki solution is acidified with the help of glacial acetic acid. It provides hydrogen ions. Can we call it a redox titration? Yes, we can call it redox titration also because the liberated iodine is oxidizing sodium thiosulfate Na2S2O3 to sodium tetrathionate Na2S4O6. What is the white precipitate which is formed at the end point? The white precipitate which is formed at the end point is of sodium iodide NaI. Have you performed any other iodometric titration before? Yes, I have performed iodometric titration for the estimation of copper in the brass. So, I think I have discussed most of the Vibovosi questions that could be asked if you are performing this experiment. If you have any more doubts, any queries, please leave your comment in the comment box. Don't forget to like it if you have really enjoyed the video. Subscribe my channel for learning more Vibovosi questions and more gaining more knowledge. Till then, take care of yourself and bye-bye.